I was going to say, I would just like to uh, welcome uh, everyone to uh, One Church Ministries, uh, Second Our Home Gathering, uh, where our overseer is Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadija Young. And the campus pastor is myself, uh, Minister Henry Jackson. And so, uh, so I just want to say welcome you to all of you to uh, Second Our home gathering um and so you'll be going to start off our old testament scripture uh you with with uh sister barbara jackson all right good morning i mean um psalm 19 1 through 4 7 to 14 who can deceive his own error and give my hidden fault keep my servant also from willful sin Unwanted guest. How can you make sure of our dream of living in a world in a way that our God doesn't become his hackers by singing? Let's keep our eyes on him, confess and repent for our sin, and seek divine help in keeping unwanted spiritual curve from barring into our lives. Okay, and so I'm going to read you the New Testament. Uh, this is in Romans. Uh, now I'm going to read it starting in verse 1. And okay, you ready? Okay, then uh, and it now reads that now let me speak the truth as plainly as I know it uh, in the anointed one. I am not lying when I say that my conscience and the Holy Spirit are witness to my state of constant grief. Yeah, it may sound extreme, but I wish that I were lost, cursed, and totally separated from the anointed. Oh, that would change the eternal decision of my brothers and sisters, my flesh and countrymen. They are, after all, Israel's who have been adopted into God's family. Said so the glory, the covenants, the gifts of the law, the temple service, and God's promises are rightfully heritage. And to say the patriarchs are theirs too, and from their bloodline comes the anointed one the liberating king who reigns supreme over all of us. God bless forever. Amen. Now we just going to start prayer. Um, Thank you. And thank you for 
best in giving is in any and to his ministry and give him the strength that he needs. Fixing him where he has weakened, giving up, and he has torn down, and propping him on everything he signed. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to praise and uh, worship. Um, so, so you got a song that you want wanted to sing? I want you to know who, who's on the Lord's side. And see, where do you stay? Oh, stand. Uh, who's on the Lord's side? See, where do you stand? Who is? Who's on the Lord's side? I'm on. I'm on the Lord's side. Yeah. See, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? See, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? See, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? I'm on the Lord. testimony about what you would, uh, I'm going to say what you're thankful for. Yes, Lord, I have a testimony just to say I'm making it through. I made it through. I've been to the storm. I've been to the rain. I've been to the sunshine. I've been to the pain. I'm going to testify that the Lord be good to me. Lord, not only to me, he been to my daughter, my family, my little one. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Lord, my my started off on this battlefield 2013. My daughter first got sick, and the Lord had brought me from an hour to second off, months and months, days and days, weeks and weeks, hours and hours, back and forth. And now she with me, Lord, and I'm thinking that you've given me a portion of my health and strength and the use of my limb to be able to take care of her to my best ability. I just want to thank you for strengthening me when I'm with you, build me up when I'm torn down, and propping me up on my leaning sides. Lord, we thank you. And that's the rest of me asking your son Jesus' name. Uh, do you have a testimony that you want to be thankful for? I just thank God for allowing me to see another day. I thank mm -hmm. the Lord for my health and my strength. You know, even though I'm battling cancer, but I'm still, I, I thank God I'm still here. I just thank God I know he's a healer. He said that he would never leave me nor forsake me. I yes. just thank God for just being God and God all by yourself. Amen. I have a personal testimony. Uh, I, I thank the Lord for 
yeah, for uh, giving me this assignment um, to to start this home group. Um, yeah, this is there. This is part of my, I want to say my pastoral training, but. No, I thank the Lord for giving me the strength and uh, the endurance to 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 be able to carry the weight that I uh, currently have within the ministry. Um, that I'm weekly, you know, praying, I'm reading my Bible more often. Um, yeah, I thank the Lord for just keeping me in my strength and my uh, sound mind, for uh, keeping me in, uh, uh, yet yeah, yeah, in close uh, proximity to Him. So uh yeah, I I just thank the Lord for every you know that He's done for me. John chapter five reads, I'm gonna read it from verse one through fifteen. And chapter five reads, and I'm reading from the voice translation, and it said, When when these events were completed, so Jesus led his followers to Jerusalem, where they, they would celebrate a Jewish feast together. In Jerusalem, they, they came upon a pool by the sheep gate, surrounding by five covered porches. It says, yeah, in Hebrew, this place is called Beersheba. I don't know if I'm really pronouncing that word right or not. Bathsheba. but Okay. Bathsheba. Okay, uh, Beersheba. It is a crowd of people lying the area, lying around the porches, and all of these people were disabled. In some way, say some were blind, lame, paralyzed, or plagued by diseases, and they were waiting for the waters to move. So from time to time, a heavenly messenger would come to stir the water in the pool. Whoever reached it, the water first, and got in after it, was agitated and would, oh, I'm sorry, who was, uh, Agated and will be healed on his or her disease. It says, it says in the crowd, Jesus noticed the one particular man who had been living with his uh, a disability for 38 years. So he knew this man had been waiting for a long time. So Jesus spoke to the man and he spoke that where, he said, where are you here in this place hoping to be healed? And, and he responded, kind sir, I wait, like all these people, for the waters to stir, but I cannot walk. If I am to be healed in the waters, someone must carry me into the pool without a helping hand. Someone else beats me to the water edge each time that it is stirred. So Jesus responded, said, stand up and carry your mat and walk. And at the moment, Jesus uttered these words. He said, a healing energy coursed through the man and returned life to his limbs. He stood and walked for the first time in 38 years. But this was the, the Sabbath day. And any work, including carrying a mat, was prohibited on this day. So the Jewish leaders questioned the man about his family. And, he, and they were asking him, uh, must you be reminded that it is the Sabbath, so you are not allowed to carry your mat today. Said the formal disabled man responded, who, who the man just got healed responded, said the man who healed me gave me specific instructions to carry my mat and go. And so he responded, saying that who is the man who gave you these instructions? How can we identify him? Verse 13 reads that, that the man genuinely did not know who it was that healed him, said in, in the midst of the crowd and the excitement of this renewed health, Jesus has slipped away. Sometime later, Jesus found him in the temple and again spoke to him. And uh, Jesus spoke to him saying, take a look at, at your body that it, it, it has been made whole and strong. So avoid a life of sin or, or else a calamity greater than any disability may befall you. Then the man went immediately to tell the Jewish leaders that Jesus was the mysterious healer. And to say, now I just read you John 5, verse 1 through 15. 
Um, yeah, today's scripture is referring to, well, I, I entitled it, uh, Get Up. And so, um, so the Lord have, uh, at the, at the beginning of, of, I like to say every year, um, yeah, of every year, the, uh, the, the Jewish people will have every year a, a specific pool, I, I believe within the, the center of the city where that they will go and go gather. And so all of the, uh, the disabled people or, or the people that was looking for a miracle or those type of things, they will all be, be going to, to this pool. And so though the whole tradition behind going to the pool was that, that they won't want, want it to, to get healed. So they hope that when the water start boil, boiling, uh, uh, similarly to, to this like a, a jacuzzi, that they they will that that one will get in and the one who got in will get healed from his sickness, and so uh, every year this would 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 uh, carry on, um, but however you know this specific year Jesus had decided to take his disciples on a journey and this is one of the journeys that he took them on, and so uh, as he had took them on this journey. Um, Jesus had actually stopped by, by, by this pool, um, and because and because I believe that that Jesus remembered this pool because this was his area I believe where he grew up around, and so as he had came to this pool, and Jesus still saw that the crowds of people were still lining up like always, and then and just at, at, as quickly. Um, and he noticed this one particular man that was sitting uh, by the pool. And so in this particular man, I believe Jesus re probably remembered the man when he was a little boy. And, you know, uh, Jesus had to be under the age of, of 30 something. So um, Jesus, I see you probably re remembered this man, same man who was sitting there by the river. And so Jesus had a conversation with them and he had asked them that, are you here in this place still hoping to be healed? Which you will read in verse uh, six. And then, uh, uh, then the, 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 the disabled man responded to him in verse seven, letting him know that, yeah, I've, I've come here to get healed. But the issue is that no one would, would, help me or, or, or it's like no one would assist me into getting me into the pool. And so all of us, uh, in some form or fashion or way, yeah, we are, a uh, came, uh, rather it was to, to, to a doctor to, to, to get a diagnosis or, or else it was to a dentist to get our, uh, a root canal pulled or, uh, whether it was was if we went to the the grocery store to get groceries, but whatever uh, uh, your situation is, normally we normally go to church to receive a message or to receive a sermon. But on this on this particular time, Jesus was asking him, "Why did you? You mean? Oh, I noticed that you're still here. You're still coming faithfully. You're still coming to to the pool, and so." And so most of us are still faithful when it comes to still putting in our tithes or when it comes to us still praying or else when it comes to us still reading our word. And we still have have, have a, a tendency of wanting to receive something. Not that is, it is not nothing wrong with receiving something. But, but however, I believe Jesus was making the point was that that he was coming here with the traditional thing in mind in hoping that if he will come to the river, that someone will pick up and take him to it. And so all of us have a perception of, of that if we do this, then this should happen. Or if I pray long enough, then I mean, I, I, I should get uh, a heal or else that if I read enough, then I mean I should uh uh something magical should God God should move on in my life. 
And so we all have the tendency of assuming that just because we do something for so long that, that things is just going to move, going to happen. And so here's this man coming to the pool for 38 years. And he was faithful just like any other man or woman was. And he was just hoping that he would get his healing too. And so as he's come here, Jesus says to him, um, was that, oh, you come here. And, and what's very interesting is Jesus didn't look at, at, at his determination when he spoke to him and he said to him that I want you to get up and take your mat and walk. And so, so sometimes in life, we, we may be in a situation in life where we feel like, like we've been through these things and we feel like we deserve a way out. But there, there's a thing that Jesus came to the man at the pool and he wanted him to understand that the way and how I want to deliver you out may not be the same way how everyone else got out. And, and so, frankly, as you notice, everyone within the scriptures who came to the pool got in the pool to receive their healing. But however, when Jesus walked to this man, Jesus didn't want this man to get healed the same way how everybody else got healed. He, in other words, he didn't want him to, to thank uh, 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 the, the J Jewish leaders for him giving time to dump in the pool. But, but however, more of the less, Jesus wanted to receive the blessing or, 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 or should I say the testimony for, from him by him knowing that, that I got healed differently from everybody else. And so what, 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 what I want to say to you is maybe God wants to heal you differently from how he healed everybody else. And so we tend to go into our, our, our dark times and, and, and our, you know, uh, most, most weak times. And we uh, tend for God to respond to us the same way. But then, but I like the way how the fact that we have, uh, that we have, that we have to grow up in the Lord and knowing that the Lord used to respond to me in this way because I was a child then. So how, how, how my mother used to respond to me when I was a child, when I would cry, you know, she would give me anything I want or she'd give me a bottle to put in my mouth so I can be quiet. But now when, when I became a teenager and I have a problem, I know I can go to her and now we can talk out the problem so now I, I can get more information so so she can let me know what I need to do to do it. And so so sometimes here Jesus was talking to the man and explaining to him that the way and how I want you to be healed is very differently from my, from how everyone else got healed. And so when Jesus spoke to the man, G Jesus was speaking to the man um, for, from hoping how he got healed like everyone else, but he spoke to him towards his future and he said to him to pick up your mat and walk. And the scripture said, and when Jesus spoke it and immediately the, the man body and limbs in his body straightened up and straightened up and, and he was finally able to get up and walk. And so when he finally got up to walk, now the Jewish leaders, the ones who will put on this tra traditional thing? What was it you know, was very it was very um, spectacle of the fact that he got up and he got healed differently from everyone else. And so they may have been alarmed in knowing that that if everyone find out that he got healed uh, 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 differently from from the water, you know, then we then we might lose our following. That we might that we might lose you know our 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 our, our congregation, or we might lose the, the the people from from believing in the this pool, but 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 so when they approach him and ask him, well who well how did 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 you get healed or who have healed you, and the man could not remember who healed him or or what for, but however the the very interesting thing is when when. Jesus told him to get up and go to church and, and go and go to church healed. So in other words, Jesus did not want him to walk into his same uh, lifestyle the same way. 
and, and so it's so mo uh and so most of us may have same mindsets that we uh and so where the Lord wants us to enter into our life again, but with a new mindset, with the new praise, with the new uh, 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 worship. And so as he go to church, he go to church and probably the people at the church probably have remembered him being the man who, who was once, who, who, who couldn't walk or, you know, or, 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 or as people had to wait on. And, but now when he comes in, he comes in as a man that's fully capable of walking himself. And, and so you might have guessed people were talking about, 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 you know, you know, who, who, who I healed him, who, who I healed him. And so, you know, it is a uh, very, very likely that, you know, that the man did get healed from, said from the Lord, uh, uh, healing him. So, so maybe that there are some things that are actually in your life that you may, may want to get, uh, healed from but the lord may not may not want to heal you like he healed everyone else i mean i, I would i would like to say from my own personal testimony uh when i had uh uh which when the doctor uh the the, the scar to take me under the knife for my surgery uh i remember my doctor saying well one of the doctors saying to my grandmother that uh that that this is pre, uh, that normally people that go through this surgery normally will only survive fifty percent of the chance. So there's not a a big possibility that he's going to even walk again. And, and so a, a, as I overheard this outside of the room, now I told God to go go ahead and take me home with them because I didn't want to go through me going through the surgery and then me being inside of a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And so, you no, know, I already know what it felt like where to be disabled, like the man in the Bible. I, I know what it feels like uh, where to be, I want to say, waited on or to be, you know, looked down uh, looked down upon. And so, and so just, just like this situation, you know, I, I would just like the man in the Bible where I was complaining about what folks didn't do for me or, or what, what, what folks uh, uh, couldn't do for me. And so, however, I, I like the scripture because when Jesus came to the man, he didn't ask him uh, no, nothing about his disability. But Jesus spoke to him and said to him that I am commanding you to get up and walk. And so when, when God healed me on that day when I, after my surgery, uh, uh, as I, it was very clear to me that Jesus wanted me to get up and walk, and, and so and so uh, with with this disabled man, the same thing. And uh, uh, it, it was another thing I wanted to point out. Um, even though that the man got healed, it it, it was kind of un 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 unnormal for him to to know how to get up and to walk again because he'd been sick his whole life. And so so with someone been 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 sick or, or they they they've been down and out for so long, they they begin to build their life around their sickness. And and, and so and so when Jesus healed the man, he had to learn to adapt to a new him. Uh and so but however when he adapted, then that's when the folks was able to see what Jesus has done for him. Yeah, I have seven uh, fold like blessings that I do want to speak yeah, into your life. Number one, uh, yeah, I speak blessings uh, of health for you and your family. Uh, 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 number two is that I speak blessings of deliverance from, from any habits that you have in your life. Uh, blessings number three is I speak blessings of peace to to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak comfort to any person hurting, lonely, uh, bereaved, or confused. And number six, uh, I, I speak. Uh, blessings of finances, uh, debt cancellations, prosperities, uh, economic empowerment to all of God's people according 
for his riches and glory. And number seven, uh, I speak blessings. I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your life, to complete your excitement, to make, to move forward in your purpose. I will just say, y'all yeah, like to thank everyone here for uh, joining me this, this afternoon. Um, you yeah, we going going to uh, you yeah, we going going to with the uh end the uh with the service with the uh benedictional speech on the back um it's a yeah we all gonna uh say it to uh gather Where? Oh, okay. oh yeah on the yeah uh you can uh find us on numbers six twenty four through twenty six but it say uh may God bless you may God keep you may God smile on you may God gift you may God look you in the face and make you prosper.